crash and burn. Seeing as how I have absolutely no monitor here, Ah, oh, fuck, I can't see where I'm sitting. Uh, hey everyone, so tonight I want to discuss uh, the initial release for the series of films that are known as Jesus. That was like the worst. Hey everyone, so tonight I want to talk about VHS, and it's not so much as in the video home system that everybody was obsessed with throughout the 80s and the 90s. I want to talk about the first installment in the now long-running horror anthology series VHS. And this, of course, is the first one from a number of years back. Again, you would assume that I would check these types of things out, especially considering the fact it's 2012. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, the reason that I have this up on my phone, it's not because I'm attempting to cheat, it's that I would like to refer to the segment, the segments, sorry, as their titles, so everybody has a better understanding of what's going on. But anyways, yeah. So this kicks off, uh, I believe there's VHS 1, there's VHS 2, there's Viral, and then there's 94 and 99, so that would have them clock in at 5 as of 2022. Um, this and the second one are my favorites overall, and that's not to say that Viral through 94 and 99 didn't have their standout segments, but I found that the first two VHS, especially the, the first VHS, this one here, this had the biggest impact. These were, this was uh, the good old days when Ty West and Adam Wingard were involved with David Bruckner. David Bruckner, of course, who just did the new Hellraiser uh, with the sexless pinhead, and he also did the Nighthouse. And Adam Wingard, as far as his horror pedigree and Ty West's, I don't think we need to go into them. Ty West is currently on fucking fire working on his... Uh, X slash Pearl slash Maxine trilogy with Mia Goth. Um, the thing I like about this is that it feels genuine. The wraparound story about the creepy asshole gang of low-level sex offenders who sexually assault the chick and her boyfriend at the uh, underground parking lot, which I'm imagining is at a mall or something. That's nice. I will say, though, about finding yourself in that situation is if you happen to have anything on you, any kind of weapon that you could legally carry, like, oh, I didn't realize, officer, I left the box cutter in my pocket. You know, fuck, I was opening boxes at home, and these assholes tried to rape my girlfriend. You could slit one of their throats with that fucking thing, and you'd get away with it. All you have to say is, I thought they were going to kill me and gang rape my girlfriend, and so I stuck the motherfucker. And that is a clear-cut case of self-defense. So... In that sense, I liked that part of the wraparound story, but overall, I don't love it when movies delve into the world of sex assaults because I just, I'm just so uncomfortable with sex assaults in general, but especially cinematic-based sex assaults. I just don't feel that they have any place in, in any era of cinema. Um, but especially as of 2012, we should probably knock that shit off. But anyways, the wraparound story is cool. Each of these pieces of shit sort of disappear with each segment coming and going, so they definitely get theirs. Um, the opening, which the opening one here is Amateur Night, right? Yeah, it is, right? No, wait. Yeah, the opening story is Amateur Night with Lily, the gargoyle chick. She ended up getting a movie. Uh, the character ended up getting a movie based around her, and I've, I've never seen the movie, but I've heard sort of mixed things about it that it wasn't necessarily the best because... In a lot of ways, um, next to, which call call it, um, the sick thing that happened to Emily when she was younger. This is the strongest segment here. I absolutely love the character of Lily. I believe that's her name. Jesus, you would honestly think that I would do this, you know? Amateur Night, directed by David Bruckner. Where is it here? Yeah, it is Lily. So I loved how the guys didn't really do anything wrong. They planned on, on banging that one chick, but then she passed out. And it was nice to see that they didn't dive into the world of rape here. They were just sort of like, oh, fuck, man. The guy was really pissed off, too, because the chick was unconscious. And even though I will st still say that's sort of caveman-ish of him, I suppose I understand. You thought you were going to get to fuck some chick, and then now you're not. So I, I guess in some sort of juvenile grade five way, I could understand him throwing a temper tantrum, I guess. Um, but then Lily just sort of kicks in when he decides, I'm going to try and have sex with her. And his buddy's like, whoa, what the fuck is up with her feet, man? And then she just eviscerates them all, except for the one that she liked, the guy with the hidden glass, the hidden camera and his glasses. Um, she flies off into the sky with him, very Jeepers Creepers-like, and that would suck. 
Then, as far as the other segment, second honeymoon was fun. I liked how um, the husband didn't stand a chance. Um, and then, as far as Jesus, trying to remember the segment titles here, it's just not working for me. Amateur night was rad. Second honeymoon was awesome. Tuesday the seventeenth, I absolutely loved the effects in Tuesday the seventeenth. Um, I liked how like the glitchy dude that was killing everyone would just appear behind them, and I believed the effects. It wasn't like they went to, to, to VFX in order to sort of make up for a lack of like money in order to do this through like a more traditional sense. There's no way to do a glitch in a practical sense. It's all going to be digital. And they did an incredibly good job, and I thought that was a lot of fun. But the most impactful one here, hands down for me, is the sick thing that happened to Emily when she was younger. Like, this guy is manipulating these women into believing that they, they damaged themselves, broke this and slashed that during some type of fugue state so that he can advance his, I think he's working, doing research for a paper, if memory serves. Fuck, you know, you'd think I would have rewatched these before talking about them. But no, that's just, I didn't do that. I think that's what he's doing. And he's setting these, this girl up for like a fall and she believes it's her because she has a history of mental illness and so the poor thing becomes more and more negatively affected by what she believes to be her actions, her, her self-harming actions. And the whole time, it's her piece-of-shit boyfriend. And when it concludes with her being locked away again, it cuts to him doing it to the next girl. And I thought that in addition to being the best segment out of this first movie, just because of the impactful nature and the, the overall emotional damage that that would cause... Um, this one also affected me the most personally because I was like, God, that's fucking cold. It's like one of the coldest things I've ever seen in a movie, you know? So I absolutely loved this movie overall because I felt like it was genuine. It felt honest. At this point, this was a one-off. I don't know. I don't think they'd intended to release three, four, five of them. Maybe they did, of course, have a sequel in mind because every great horror movie needs a great horror movie sequel. But beyond the second one, I don't know if they'd really pictured a world full of viral in 94 and 99 and this just feels gritty and it feels honest and it feels like really rough around the edges and I believed all of this it seems um completely real I suppose as far as you know a chick gargoyle chick thing with her face that splits open that flies off into the fucking sky with dudes can be real. I don't know how real that could be, but overall it still felt very genuine and that's my favorite thing about the first VHS as well as the second VHS is they feel icky, you know? They feel grimy and dirty and they remind me of like the early Saw films. Um, but, oh, fuck, this is uh, over eight minutes. So I am going to go. So thank you so much for hanging out with me while I discussed the initial VHS that was released back in 2012. Like always, if you liked this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. And, yeah, if you see any effects on this video, they're not effects. I'm just fucking with the tracking on this old RCA camcorder that I'm recording this on. There's no effects. It's just genuinely me pressing buttons on this old analog device. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.